were promised that we were going to get the finalized sound of the Dodge Charger EV. So the video that they actually put out, while you might think that it's the uh, twin turbo version of the car, it's actually what the EV sounds like. And if you look very closely at the car, you can see that unlike the twin turbo model, the model that they show in that video, assuming they didn't do any trickery or photo shopping or video shopping or anything, uh, you could see that it has that aerodynamic R-wing in the front of it, which basically is uh, part of the aero design package that allows air to move around the car much, much smoother and therefore tries to resist the drag coefficient despite the fact it's so high. Um, here, what is this, Road and Track, they basically said some of the things that I already basically put into a uh, video that I made. So they said, uh, based on information, they said leaked internal documents. And let me just say this, as far as leaked internal documents, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that they're leaking anything. I think what they're doing is they're purposefully putting this information out there because what they're trying to do is get you prepared for the pricing of this vehicle. They, they're, what they're trying to say is that, yeah, we'll put the information out there, and for those people who actually think that they have a chance to buy one or they can actually afford one, those are the people who are most likely going to uh, save their money and say, yeah, I'm going to go buy one of these things. But they needed some idea about how much this thing was going to cost because they're overdue on releasing these cars. Right now, it's August. We're not in the middle of August yet, but we're very close to it. By now, you should have some idea about these cars. Like, what have you not seen? You haven't seen any... Uh, road test reviews you haven't seen them even bring these cars to the dealerships to show them off and take orders you haven't seen anything Stellantis has been behind on the EV vehicles the Wagoneer S the Jeep Grand Cherokee electric replacement they've been behind on that they've been behind on the Charger and I'm not surprised because the thing about it is this is their first attempt at fielding a, a fully electric vehicle. And um, even GM couldn't get it right. And GM had a lot of software issues. Part of it was because these cars have a 12-volt system that kind of conflicts with the high-voltage system. So ultimately, it's like these cars can literally sit there and they can kill themselves by eating their own battery for various reasons. One of the things that we found out during this past winter, which is weird because it never came up until this winter, despite the fact these cars have been sold for so long, Teslas and other models, they've been sold for like the last 10 years. Um, one thing they found out was that when these cars get very cold, they need to warm themselves up. And if they're drawing on their battery to warm themselves up, that they're going to eat up range from the battery. Now, here in New York City, for one thing, I have two houses. There's two different places that I can charge from. In fact, at my workplace, they actually have chargers at the office space. So if I wanted to, I could charge right at the building itself. Um, I've never had to worry about coming back to a dead car. I've never had to worry about that. Um, I make it a point to always charge my battery if I get anywhere near 50 miles of range or less. And while some people might say, oh, well, you you could go a little bit longer without doing it, I, I don't take those chances. And besides, I have two years free EVgo charging. So the bottom line is um, these cars, uh, I think Dodge was probably having problems with the software. And I think that they were trying to work out a lot of bugs, and they're obviously still doing it because you haven't seen any working models of these cars yet, Not nor have you seen any reviews of these cars yet. So there's a possibility it may take between September and October before you see anything. We have no idea when the reviews about these cars are going to come out, but the mere fact that they're releasing the final sound of these cars and letting you know what that sounds like, I guess... That's basically their way of saying, yeah, well, we're almost there. As far as I'm concerned, they should have been there like a year ago, but they're not there yet. 
So, uh, long story short, um, these are the pictures. Oh, and because I had actually saved the pictures, but it looks like I don't have to. So, as you can see, they're basically saying that the uh, Scat Pack models, which are the slightly higher power, slightly higher trimmed cars, are going to be around $82,000, but they're going to start somewhere around $64,995. And you can also see that the base model is going to start somewhere around $55,000. And it's going to, <laughs> wow, it says, well, so it says it starts at 55, which I'm just going to round up to 56. And after you add in the stuff like the black top package and sun and sound and uh, what is this, a $1,200 customer preferred package, which is probably like safety nannies and stuff. They're showing that the total price is, what is that? Is that 68? It's about 68, $69,000. So they're basically saying that the cheaper model of this thing is going to be between 56 and 69. But the more expensive model is going to be between 65 and 82, which is pretty much what I already put in the last video that I made about this. I'm not going to keep talking about this thing. You know, there's a lot of YouTubers who, who, who go on and on and on about this and how much they hate EVs and everything. The bottom line is, at this point, you don't have a choice. Uh, Stellantis, just like they fucked up SRT division, they have all of the rights to all of the technology, all of the names, all of that. So you're not going to see any Hemi unless they decide to build one. You're not going to see one. Uh, you're not going to see SRT come back because they've already let you know SRT is dead. The division is dissolved. Uh, as you can see, they got rid of the Grand Cherokee. And I really think that was stupid, but they, really, they got rid of the Grand Cherokee nameplate and now it's called the Wagoneer S. So they're telling you up front, it's like, yeah, we're letting this shit die. That's, that's basically what they're doing. So supposedly there has been information shared that uh, they, they're basically going to uh, dissolve Chrysler. They're going to get rid of Chrysler. And I'm not surprised because here you are, you've let this company sink into just all they have is like one minivan. And it's the Pacifica. Before, they had the Pacifica and the Voyager. And the Voyager was basically a cheaper version of the Pacifica. And then they had the Chrysler 300. So they let the Chrysler 300 basically die and never gave it a Hellcat engine. Then they got the Pacifica and the Voyager. And rather than say, you know what we'll do? We'll make the Voyager the cheap model. And we'll make the Pacifica the decked out model. So we'll have two minivan choices where you can spend more money and get a fully loaded, you know, cruiser for your family, or you can just, you know, spend a little bit of money. And if you're, you got like a Korean dry cleaners, it's like, you can have this minivan, you can drive around and you can deliver clothes, you know, but they, they didn't do that. And now the same person, Christine Fuelwell, who was working for Chrysler, uh, she was the CEO of Chrysler. Now they've put her in charge. Now the Tim Kaniskas is gone. And then you got all these people. Oh, no, we need Tim Kaniskas back. Yo, that man was working for them for like 30 years. He's not coming back. It's like he's retired. He made his money. He's going to go to Bali or he's going to go be on some island somewhere sipping margaritas or whatever it is. And he ain't even going to be thinking about this shit. <laughs> you know, every now and then he might come make a video on YouTube or something like that. Basically saying, I told them so. But for the most part, that man is going to go and enjoy his retirement. And that's what he should do. Stellantis, however, they don't give a shit about Chrysler. And they don't give a shit about Dodge. Because those aren't their money-making nameplates. Their money-making nameplates are really Jeep and Ram. There's information being shared that supposedly they're going to move Ram to Mexico. And in my opinion, they're doing that because they're going to screw over the UAW. So I guess they figured, oh, the UAW held us up and screwed us up and then tried to sabotage these cars as they were coming off the line. So I guess they figured, yeah, well, we'll show them. We'll take away the factories. We'll put them in another country. And uh, to hell with you. 
And that looks like what they're planning to do. So as far as I'm concerned, Stellantis is basically dead. I mean, you know, they've got a lot of brands and everything, but as far to me, they're dead. I'm done with them. So, you know, it's sad, but the bottom line is there's a lot of these dudes who are emotionally wrapped up in these cars. It's like they want these things. They want newer versions of these things, and they ain't going to get them. Because now Stellantis is basically saying that the only new version of this thing that we're making is going to be something that you absolutely don't want, which is in the EV. Now, as you know, I'm personally, I don't have a problem with EV. And for me, EV has been actually very fun. I've been enjoying my EV. But there's some people, some, you know, these, these takeover, these street takeover assholes. And as far as I'm concerned, the cops should be shooting them. But um, these people are taking over these the streets and, you know, causing mayhem and havoc and shit and taking over bridges. If it was up to me, the cops would have special tasers with higher voltage and higher amperage where you damn near might be able to set somebody's coat on fire. And the second that these liberals start that shit where they start protesting, oh, yeah, we'd have even more of them. Because, you know, they actually have a taser that has a backpack and that backpack has like salt water in it. And you spray that shit on everybody, and then you run electricity through it so it completes the circuit. Um, so all I'm saying is, it's like this bullshit about fucking up traffic, especially when I'm in it. Uh-uh. We're not playing that shit at all. So I, I don't know what, the, you know, the cops at this point, they're, they're confiscating cars. So they're going, they, if they catch you doing this shit, they've got, what is it, car forfeiture or property forfeiture? They will take your fucking car. And I know there's somebody who want to get gangster and they want to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to fight the cops. Yeah, well, the cops got hundreds of fucking rounds of bullets and there's like 10 and 20 of them when they swarm you. So you can just add up the number of bullets. You can ask Abner Louima how that shit works. It doesn't work out well. Like you want to fight the police. It doesn't work out well. I know some people think that they can, but when them bullets start flying is all of a sudden they turn into little sissy girls. They start crying and shit on the ground. So the bottom line is I've had enough. And these people making all this fucking noise. They're trying to pass by my house at 2 o'clock in the morning. I had enough. So that's the bottom line. And these people taking over the, the street and shit. And you got people trying to get to the hospital. And they're trying to drive ambulances. And they're trying... Like, we're trying to maintain societal order. It's like, they don't have these problems in Singapore. Because them cops over there will cane the shit out of you. They will give you 30 lashes on your ass. It's like, we don't have public beatings here. I think we need that. But, you know, some of these countries actually do have it. So all I'm saying is, it's like, some people just don't understand how to act right. So we've got car theft. you got car parts theft. People stealing the wheels off people's cars and shit. Uh, stealing the parts off the cars. Stealing the engine out of the cars and everything. So that they could put it in another car and drive around with it and expect nobody's going to find out about it. It's like, it. it's just, I, I think I'm glad that I was able to have those cars. I'm glad that I was able to experience those cars. And then I'm glad that I was able to simply dump them. And because when I saw like the level of car theft and I saw the parts theft and it got to the point where it's like you don't even feel safe walking away from your car. Like you go to the mall or something, you, you don't even feel safe leaving your car because you're afraid somebody's going to steal parts out of it. That's that's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Or some or or all of the people who've literally gotten carjacked at gunpoint, some of which who've been killed over what over over a car. Like that's just insane. And at this point. I think it's time for this company to end. You know, um, nobody's jacking Chrysler minivans as far as I know. So, you know, Chrysler's not going to stick around. As far as I'm concerned, the Chrysler minivan, which is, they called it, the, they used to call it the town and country. Now it's just the Pacifica. As far as I'm concerned, they could take that and they could make that a Dodge product and nobody would really care. Like, they could just call it the uh, Dodge Town and Country or 
They could change the name and call it the Dodge Pacifica. Nobody would give a fuck. It, it's just, you know, nobody cares. They could call it Dodge Journey. They could, they could take the Pacifica, slap the name Dodge Journey on it, and nobody would care. People who want to buy a minivan would still buy that minivan, and people who don't just wouldn't. You know, they'd go to Kia, they'd get a Carnival, or they'd go to, I don't know, Toyota, and, you know, buy whatever they got over there. I think the Kia Carnival is actually a nicer minivan, but, you know, minivans aren't sexy, they're not cool, so nobody really cares about those. Fine. But uh, this whole thing about, you know, trying to make Chrysler have electric vehicles that are futuristic, like the Halcyon concept, that shit ain't never going to happen. It's a concept for a reason. They're, they're not putting any production into that. It's just not going to happen. Now, they could try to prove me wrong and they could try to actually build it, but they were supposed to build the airflow years ago and we got nothing. And now the company looks like it's about to be cut especially with the current economic conditions. So bottom line is this. Um, the Dutch don't give a fuck about your ego. You know, the, the Europeans hate American cars. So they damn sure don't give a shit about your ego. They don't care how you feel driving a car. They don't, they don't care about none of that. These are Europeans. They don't give a shit. Half of y'all don't even know where the Netherlands is on the map. And, and most of y'all don't even realize that it's owned by the Dutch. Because you don't do any research. But bottom line is, they don't care about American cars. They will sink these companies one by one. And they won't give two shits about it. Supposedly, BYD may be looking at buying one of these companies. And if that happens, chances are you aren't going to want the cars. Because now they're going to be made by the Chinese. And a, a, a made in China Dodge... Which actually at this point is probably highly likely since China controls so many raw materials and they are putting out so many electric vehicles at this point. Yeah, that's actually highly possible, especially if Stellantis is moving towards making their entire lineup electric. It's highly possible and it's highly probable that they will have to forge partnerships with the Chinese. The Chinese know that Americans do not want made in china vehicles they just know it so what have they done they've partnered with volvo volvo's got like their electric cars the xc40 recharge uh what have they done they've brought polestar here the polestars look kind of like volvos and most people who you know may test drive a polestar a lot of them don't even bother asking well wait a minute who makes this you know it's part owned by china and the rest of it you know it's like volvo you know, it looks like a Volvo to some extent. But um, if BYD were to take a huge stake in Dodge or Chrysler, I, I'm pretty sure it'll be Dodge, not Chrysler. But if they were, how many people would really care? You know, it's like the people who want an EV are still going to want an EV and the people who don't aren't going to want one. But as for your V8 engines, you can forget it. It's over. It's just over. And I, I'm loving these people. Oh, yeah, well, I'm just going to get the new model and I'm going to take that twin turbo engine out and I'm going to swap it with a Hellcat. Yeah, well, I really love to see you do that. And I'd love to see you go deep into debt doing it because chances are that platform is not going to support that. And, uh, you know, let's see you do it because I already know the average person can't afford that. The average, first of all, you're not even going to be able to afford the insurance on these fucking things because the insurance is going to be high as hell. The, they're trying to sell an electric charger for 80, let's just say $80,000. Now, I've been saying that the best comparison right now for the Charger EV is actually the Cadillac Lyric. A fully loaded Cadillac Lyric with every option is about $80,000, give or take. And that's assuming, like, there's really no incentives or whatever. But, yeah, you're talking about $80,000. The insurance cost on my car, you're talking about three between $300 and $400 a month. So now you're talking about an $80,000 car. If you lease it, you're going to pay at least $1,000 a month. And then you have to basically add another $400. So you're going to be at $1,400 to $1,500 a month. I You know, different states have lower insurance, some have higher insurance, but I live in New York City. 
our insurance keeps going up. They have no answer as to why it keeps going up. Some people say it's because electric vehicles are more expensive. Some people say it's because of car theft and car fraud and this, that, and other. Bottom line is, if you do try to buy one of these things, you're going to be at $1,500 a month. Whether it's the car note or the insurance or both, you're going to be about $1,500 a month or more. Because I, I really don't know what you, because, you know, some of you have shitty credit and your interest rates are going to be high. Because, I you know, when I bought my car, my car was a, what, 3% interest. When I bought my Hellcat, it was like a 3% interest rate. When I bought my Jeep SRT, it was like a 3% interest rate. Right now, the cheapest interest rate you're getting is around 8 and 9%. And I'm seeing these clowns on YouTube walking from dealership to dealership. Acting like they're exposing the dealers for raising prices. Talking about how they're finagling the dealers and shit. They walk onto the lot. The dealers expose them right away. They're like, wait a minute, are you recording here? No, this is private property. Turn that camera off. And they walk away having bought nothing. And then act like they finagled the system. You haven't finagled shit. You walked in there empty-handed. You walked out empty-handed. So you haven't finagled a goddamn thing. But my point is the interest rates are so freaking high. And the prices of these cars have been marked up so high. Honestly, you shouldn't be buying any of this stuff right now. You shouldn't buy any of it. And I hate to say that because I'm a Stellantis shareholder. It's like, you you know, your prosperity is my prosperity. I hate to say that, but honestly, if it was me, I wouldn't be buying anything from them right now. I would wait it out. And I foresee that when they start, when the dealers start getting these cars, when they start getting their shipments of these electric vehicles, I think the Jeep Wagoneer S may move to the people who pre-ordered one. Those might sell very quickly. But I think these Charger EVs, I think these things are going to sit on the lot. I really do. Just like when I used to make those videos, and I, I was the first person who came up with that shit, making fun of the fact that the uh, Trackhawk was sitting on the lot and nobody was buying it because it was $100,000. I think these cars are going to sit. And I think these cars are going to sit for a while. Uh, the interest rates are much too high to afford an $80,000 electric car, a $70,000 electric car, a $60,000 electric car. The interest rates are just too high for this stuff. And uh, I think Stellantis has basically killed Dodge. That's what I think. Now, they could prove me wrong. They could say, oh, yeah, well, three years from now, oh, yeah, we've got the highest profits ever. You were wrong. Ha, 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 ha. I just don't see that happening. The average person who buys one of these cars does not want an electric vehicle. I think everybody can agree with me on that. But the Hellcat is gone. Uh, the twin turbo hurricane, the reality is nobody really wants that. Um, that's just a reality. That's not what they want. Um, you know, you're talking about like 500 horsepower, five, even if it's 550 horsepower, that isn't a significant improvement over the uh, 5.7 or the 392 Hemi. I mean, the 392 Hemi was 485, but it had low-end torque. Uh, they can talk all the shit they want about how fast turbos spool up, but that's, the reality is nobody wants that shit. It's the bottom line. Nobody wants it. Given the choice, I already know which one they're going to go for. They want the V8. They don't want the V6. But guess what? This company has said, you're not getting it. They said, it's over. They said, it's kaput, it's finito, you can forget it, it's, it's just done, it's, do, it's just done. So, they've killed it, and in doing so, they've killed Dodge's reason for being. Dodge, at this point, has nothing new, their cars are all old, the Hornet is a rebadged Alfa Romeo, it's like, it's not selling well, it's too expensive, $50,000 for a little ass... Uh, I guess you could call it a sporty, compact SUV. Nobody wants that. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. So um, you know, they've they've they've. Been, it's almost like they had a CEO that said, "Yeah, let me make every single move I can make to sink this company." 
Now, I'd like to think that this person stepped in there with good intentions, but at this point, I have to wonder. So, where are we? Um, So, yeah, they say Butterfield's post appears to show the build sheets for two different Charge Daytona builds, an RT and a Scat Pack. The Scat Pack, the faster of the two, seems to start at 65,000 before options and delivery fees. Few options bring that number up to eighty thousand one hundred seventy-five dollars. Then what appears to be a nineteen ninety-five delivery fee? Yeah, that's because these goddamn things are so heavy, they gotta bring them from so so far. But anyway, it says the more affordable RT starts at fifty-five thousand nine hundred ninety-five before delivery charge, then reaches sixty-eight thousand five hundred seventy, with its own complement of options and fees. For comparison, the outgoing gas. Charger RT and Scats start at forty five thousand and fifty two thousand respectively, which is still high because I remember when the SRT charger was fifty thousand dollars, but post pandemic they've raised the price on everything, especially the Hellcats they put those at a hundred thousand uh, dollars. That would make the new RT ten thousand nine hundred thirty five dollars more expensive than its predecessor. Although the price comes with a jump from three seventy to a peak four ninety five, uh, the Scat Pack is a whopping thirteen thousand seventy dollars more expensive than the car it replaces. But it goes from four eighty five horsepower to six hundred and seventy. But it needs that extra horsepower simply because you're dealing with a car that now weighs close to six thousand pounds. So it's not the same thing. Now I know that this Scat Pack is going to be faster than my Cadillac Lyric. I understand that. The RT most likely will be about the same performance as my Cadillac Lyric. I, I would say that because they're both about 500 horsepower and they both weigh slightly shy of 6,000 pounds. But it says these spec sheets notably don't show line items from what Dodge calls direct connection stage kits, which is basically their way of charging you more money, microtransactions to boost the power of your your car because your your car is not going to be that. You're going to try to race a Tesla Plaid and you're going to lose. It's just that simple. Tesla Plaid is $89,000 starting. And Tesla, unlike Dodge, has a killer app. They have the Tesla Supercharger Network. So now you're in a situation where Tesla makes a car that's much faster than your car. First of all, them Tesla plaids are kicking ass. They eaten up the Dodge Demons. The Demon 170 gets eaten up. I keep hearing everybody, oh yeah, well, you know, I could I could race the plaid, I could race the sapphire and everything. And then I see them get out on these uh on these racetracks. And they get eaten up. Eaten up every fucking time. They get Dodge put this car out, and supposedly all the Demon 170 owners are like, yo, I can't get the numbers that Dodge got. And then when they try, they blow their fucking engines. So what am I to what am I to think? So oh no, but 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 it's possible to run eights on a good day. We, you know, the air is perfect and the stars align, and then the Stargate turns the dial and you you got the Anubis and you got the set and the Raw and the Horus and everything lines up and yeah you can run an 8.5 I hear that shit but then every fucking time I see a Tesla running against a Demon or a Demon 170 they get eaten alive every single time and don't even get me started on that Lucid Sapphire cause that Lucid Sapphire when them Bugatti owners Line up against the Lucid Sapphire. They get their ass eaten. Now, imagine paying $4 million to watch the taillights of a goddamn Lucid Sapphire. That's a damn shame. $4 million. And this guy drives past you in a $250,000 car. And his whole family's in the car laughing at you. That's a damn shame, man. But anyway... Uh, that's their story. They don't have much more because Dodge hasn't given them much more. So all they're saying, four-door models, inline six offerings, which isn't coming out until later, and tri-motor EV variants are all coming later. So when they say tri-motor, they're basically saying that they're trying to make the car as fast as a Tesla Plaid. But they're saying that that's going to be the Dodge Banshee EV, and those prices are going to exceed 100000 That's what I've basically heard they also say that those are going to be limited editions. So those are going to be kind of like the Demon Demon 170. Like those are going to be numbered and they're going to be extremely expensive. 
And that's assuming that there's no crazy markups. But the way these dealers are hurting and the way these dealers are basically being threatened with bankruptcy at this point, chances are there's going to be some crazy markups on these cars. But I already know the, the core audience core audience doesn't want this. The core audience are the same people who see my Jeep when I do take my Jeep out and are constantly asking me questions. Oh, oh wow, you got a Jeep SRT? How much for, whoa, how many miles you got on it? How much you want for it? And I tell them, no, 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 nope, uh, I'm not selling it. I'm holding on to it. It's paid off. I'm holding on to it. I feel like John Wick when the Russians walk up to him and they're like, hey, that's a nice car, man. How much for the car? And then they try to kill his dog and shit. And they try to steal his car and everything. And he has to come back and kill everybody. Yeah, it, it's kind of a strange feeling when you have something like that in public and everybody's watching it. It's a really strange feeling. Now, with these Charger Hellcats and Challenger Hellcats, you can't even park these cars because somebody will try to steal the wheels or the tires or the car. You know, you, 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 you have to have your head on a swivel and my Desert Eagle cocked just to, just to take your car to get gas? That's crazy. But that's how it feels. That's exactly how it feels. It's like I have a 45 and I got a 50 cal. And I almost have to decide, hmm, which one should I take with me to the gas station? And you shouldn't have to live like that. Meanwhile, with my Cadillac, I'm nice driving it, comfortable. It drives itself. I love it. Nobody gives a fuck about it. And I like that. I like the fact that I can park it anywhere I want. Nobody even, like, nobody's, nobody's watching it like a predator. Like, like it's like the hawks watching the eagle, like, the, the eagles watching the mice and the hawks watching the mice and the owls watching the mice. It's like, it's like you, you could park... My Cadillac, nobody's worried. Like, people, you know, complimented. They, oh, that's a nice car and everything. That's really nice. Oh, that's a pretty car. But I don't have to worry about somebody trying to jack me for it. Meanwhile, with my Jeep SRT, oh, wow, that's an SRT. I am like, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, how much you pay for that? I'd be like, uh, well, I got it, like, years ago. And, oh, well, how much do you want for it? It's like, I never said I was selling it. You know, that's a really, really weird feeling. That was the feeling, especially with that Hellcat. Everybody's trying to race you. You're on the, the highway. Everybody's trying to race you. You park your car and you worry about looking back at it and shit. You worry about, is that car still going to be there when I come back to it? It's like nobody should have to live like that. Like, you know, that's just how I feel about it. So I think it's time for this shit to end. Uh, once they put them twin turbos in those cars, nobody's going to want them. Nobody's going to bother trying to steal them because they're big and they're slow. Nobody wants them. You're going to be, if you try to race Infinity Q60s and stuff, you're going to lose because they're slow. Um, the EV models, it's like, I, I don't really think anybody's going to try to steal those because electric vehicles are basically smartphones on wheels. So... Like, even with my watch, I can tell exactly where my car is. Even when I was in Bali and Singapore, I could go on my watch and be like, hey, is my car still there parked in front of such and such's house? Oh, yes, it is. I can see it right here on the map. It's like nobody's trying to steal that because those cars are computers on freaking wheels. They're smartphones on wheels. They're basically find my iPhone on wheels. That's what it is. Nobody's trying to steal that. So it is what it is. You know, I... As far as I'm concerned, this whole takeover shit, it's time for it to end. First of all, most of these assholes are getting these cars. They're not even making the first payment on them. And then they're wrecking them because they're racing them. And they, you know, they have no skills whatsoever. Everybody swears they have skills right up until they end up in a fucking wall or in a tree. And it's wrapped around a tree. And now you're supposed to pray for them. It's like, I'm not praying for you. It's like, you should have never had that shit in the first place. Um, and they, they never even make the first payment. So if it's like the banks have learned, it's like, we're not giving loans. The insurance company is like, we're not insuring these things. So now you're, you're up Shit's Creek without a paddle. And the dealers are too, because you've ruined everything. You've killed everything. You ruined everything. I'm just glad that I was able to walk away from it. I'm just glad I was able to say, yeah, okay, here it is. I'm, I'm handing this in. I'm selling this. I don't need it no more. It's over. Goodbye. And, and I just walk away because Stellantis sucks as a company. That's number one. Their service sucks. 
I don't like this service. I don't like the company. I liked them better as FCA. Not to say that FCA was perfect, but Stellantis fucking sucks. So for me to walk away from Stellantis, I, I, I don't mind. But that, that's just how I feel about it. So, you know, any criticisms, questions, comments, you know, you could, you could, you could, you could put it in the URLs. Oh, well, not the URL section. You could, you know, you could comment on it. But um, that's just how I feel about it.